Good afternoon, uh, Rob Corder, the editor of Watch Pro, with you again uh, with another one of our uh, industry interviews. Today we've got Rolf Studer, who's the uh, chief executive officer of Oris, an independent watch brand. Um, we're going to be finding out, obviously, how uh, business is performing, not just uh, right now during the, the uh, coronavirus lockdown, but we'll talk about how business is performing um, up, unt up, until, up until then. Um, and um, probably trying to get his views on what's happening with Basel World, because Oris was one of the brands that was due to exhibit there and um, we don't really know what's going to happen in 2021, whether there'll be a show that's right for brands like Oris. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll see what he has in store for retailers, retail partners who are obviously mostly shut around the world at the moment and how he's going to help them, how Oris is going to help them uh, emerge stronger. Um, so yeah, well, the next voice you hear, or hopefully the next face you see, will be Mr. Studa. So how, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good. Where, where, are, you speaking, where are you speaking to us from? Uh, well, I'm at home, near Lucerne in Switzerland. Yeah. Like many of us are, I guess you're home too. Yeah, absolutely. It might look like I've got London in the background here, but it's actually uh, just wallpaper. So. <laughs> um, so I wanted to to you know catch up. Obviously, there's a lot to discuss, right? You know about the absolute current situation, but I want to put it in a bit of, bit of context and uh, talk about how things have been going for for Oris in the in the year or so le leading up to the to the current lockdown, and then kind of what's planned afterwards. But uh, I don't know I don't know whether you want to want to start with the current situation or maybe put the con context around it first. Yeah, sure. Well, the current situation is very difficult, as you know. Most of our clients around the world are closed. Our teams are at home. Production is closed. Uh, yeah, it's really time to look after your team, your customers, your consumers, make sure everybody's safe. It's not a time for sales. It's really a time to be in touch and yeah, just ensure that, that everybody is okay. Mm. I mean, do you do you see any? When do you see things changing? When might production open? When might you start opening up distribution again? I mean, I know you're not a scientist or a doctor, but unless you are, but uh, what, what can you tell us? No, I'm not, and it's a very <laughs> difficult question. Yeah. We see that things in Asia, especially in China, get a little bit better. The week before last week was the best this year in China. The week last week was the second best this year in China. Taiwan, uh, South Korea, they're still um, open and selling quite decently. So you see some movement there. Things never really halted completely. But um, here in Europe, I, you know, it's still going to take weeks still. Things uh, go back to a semi-normal. You see in countries like Austria where the stores are open that um, jewelers don't have that much traffic, so people still have other things on their minds than buying watches, at least in the Western world. Yeah, and I guess when we look at the United States, it'll be a little bit um, region by region, state state by state, a little bit like in Europe here, I suppose, depending on how they how and when they ease their lockdowns. Yeah, let's see how they do it. Uh, I think it's very difficult this, uh, decisions, but yeah, let's hope we get through it as quickly as possible and find to a, a new normal as soon as we can, yes. I mean, I wonder at times like this, whether, whether Oris is a, as an independent business, whether that's an advantage because you can make decisions quickly and uh, or whether it's a disadvantage because, you know, we'd all, we all wish we had Richemont's money behind us or, <laughs> or LVMH's money behind us, that would make things a lot easier. Well, we see our independence certainly as a strong advantage. To be fiercely independent is one of our key brands of values. And, uh, well, you know, our team, you know that we have a um, tight-knit team, that we are a very strong community also as a, as a company. And I think this is of advantage right now. We have strong relationships to our customers. And I think when you're independent, you can just be a bit more human, a bit more normal. And that certainly helps these days. 
I mean, is, is, is there any difficulty getting through this period in terms of cash and, and uh, you know, how, how long it, you could keep going if the, if, the, uh, if the lockdown lasts, whatever, six months? God help us all. Well, of course, uh, cash is the key thing at the moment. And of course, cash, cash flow is little. We as a company, we are on very stable grounds. We are um, very soundly founded. We have been managed in a very conservative way from a financial point of view the last decades. So yeah, this uh, crisis will hurt us, but it won't make us go away for sure. Great, great. Well, I mean, I'd say that 2019 was a year for the, if you look at the entire Swiss watch industry as a whole, 2019 was a, a, a decent year. If you look at the uh, export figures, I mean, not, not quite a record year, but, but, but very close to a, a record year. Although it wasn't a year that sort of generated huge amounts of excitement. It was a fairly conservative year, I'd say, uh, uh, by, by most, most of the big, big brands. How, how would you describe last year and your sort of trading in the, you know, the very start of this year? Uh, well, I think last year was very interesting. As you say, it was a decent year. Um, dominated by a massive increase in average price. Mm. The industry grew by around 3%. The average price increased by 18%. Um, I think it was a year that everybody expected to be a little better than it was, yeah. which led um, a lot of um, players uh, to have a little bit more stock than they wanted to have at the end of the year which was somewhat unfortunate now um, with the crisis that we have. Um, we started very well into the year, double digit increase uh, on budget, uh, but then February yeah, was down and March was even more down. And now April, of course, is very difficult. And yeah, now let's see how things develop and we will just take it step by step as everyone else. Sure. I mean, what what are your plans in terms of major new launches this year? Because obviously you're one of the one of the exhibitors who was going to be at, at Basel World. I think I even had my appointment in the diary with you, and um, you know suddenly it's not happening this year. And it, I think Oris is among a, a a group of brands that find themselves a little bit homeless now as we as we look towards 2021, where when things might be in Geneva. Well, we have a strong home, and that's in Holstein to start with. So we are not homeless, homeless at all. But yes, of course, um, we would really have a very strong product lineup this year. And I am really sad that Basel World isn't happening because we would have had some great news to show in Basel World. So now um, we had to adjust our launch plan, like other brands. Also, it doesn't make so much sense to launch a lot of products when no retailers are open, when um, consumers uh, can't go and see watches at retailers. Yeah. Still, we don't want to postpone everything to next year, so we will have a few launches throughout the year. In fact, we will have one on um, just a day after tomorrow. We decided to do a pre-launch of this watch tomorrow, actually, for, for my Oris members, so for our community. Now, uh, in these times where you can't physically see people, we had a lot of digital contact, we had a lot of Zoom calls with consumers and enthusiasts, and they all said it would be nice to, um, yeah, have um, a little bit of Basel World or, or, or a novelty that we can see before everyone else, so we listened, and tomorrow we're going to do that. This afternoon, we sent out an email and we already had to raise our um, Zoom subscription because um, <laughs> the thousands of people that we had that could participate were already surpassed after only a few hours. So we think that's going to be a very um, interesting thing tomorrow. So, you know, possible is not going to happen. I think it's very sad, but there are other ways to interact with your community. Okay, so so aside from that from that launch this week, you you think it'll be mostly maybe limited editions, special editions that you'll drop, you know, over, over the months once we once we come out of this. Yeah, that's how we have um, laid it out. Now we already had a few launches earlier this year. Yeah, a bit of um, a hidden champion, I think, the forty-one point five millimeter Arquis State, In my opinion, um, 
yeah, best proportioned office that we ever made. Then Lake Baikal, also in January. Now we will have two more limited editions uh, throughout the summer and then our big launch of the year in the fourth quarter. That's how we have laid it out now, but let's see how things develop. Maybe we have to change again. We are now already used to it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you, must, you must be getting used to making plans quickly. Um, so, so do, you've got a little bit more time to think about uh, 2021. I mean, do you, do you expect to be at Basel World next year, in Geneva next year, doing your own thing next year? What, what are your first thoughts? Well, my very first thoughts were, it's really sad that Basel World wasn't able um, to find a way into the future with their big exhibitors. I always liked Basel World as the moment for the whole industry to meet. Mm -hmm. And I think the Swiss watch industry deserves one place um, to meet as an industry. And this place should be in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So that was the first thing. Now, um, a lot of things seem to move to Geneva. Basel World was heavily criticized the last few years for not being innovative enough. So. Let's see what exactly the concept of Geneva is. Then we can um, assess that. So far, we don't really know. Um, yeah, and so now everything um, is open for discussion, right? We have teams in all our major markets around the world. So basically, in Basel world, the Californian salesperson was seeing their Californian um, retail customer. You can dispute how much sense that makes. Um, so now we are going to um, look at all options, uh, including digital, including um, learning more about Geneva. We are in touch with them. And then we will make a decision as soon as we have all the information. Mm. OK. And uh, you mentioned earlier that this isn't really a, a time to be selling watches into, you know, into distribution, to your wholesale help, wholesale market so i've certainly spoken to a lot of retailers who appreciate that uh, they're not getting uh, you know they're not, they're not getting strong armed by their local reps to try and take take any more product at the moment um but what you know what's the sort of message to those retailers you know they're, they're facing the same as you know we all are facing the same thing we want to we want to control our cash flow as much as we possibly can um we want to be able to be as resilient as possible because we don't know how long we're going to have to be resilient for. What's it, what, how does a, a brand like Oris uh, deal with that situation? What sort of conversations can you have with your retailers? Might, might it be delaying payments or um, yeah, I don't know, buybacks? I mean, is there anything you can help them with? Well, the hashtag we use in these times, we also use for our um, local hero program that has been very successful on Instagram, is in this together. Yeah. I think that's what it is, right? We're all in this together. And the most important thing it is to talk. You need to talk to each other. You need to find solutions. Uh, as we discussed, it's not about selling watches. It's about really um, uh, focusing on the human sites. And there is things uh, one partner can do, things the other partner can do um, to help each other. And yeah, we need to go through this together. And we talk to all of our um, selling partners, retail partners, to our suppliers. And um, the more you talk, the better solutions you find. And I think that's, that's the right thing to do right now. Mm. I, th I think one of, the, um, one of the benefits you have with, with Oris um, is you have a very settled team, a very long, you know, long standing team, not, not just in Switzerland, but around the world. You've got you know, great management in the United States and the UK, which I, you know, these people that I know, know personally, and I'm sure those people are, you know, can pick up the phone to any one of their, their retailers and have a, you know, have a, have a chat as friends and, uh, and find a solution through this. Exactly. Being a family um, really uh, makes a difference right now. And that's, that's what we are. And doing exactly that with your customers, I think that makes a difference. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you think as a, you know, as, as a company, you absolutely have to sell watches at, at some point. Do you, do you think that the balance between wholesale and direct to consumer via either via e-commerce or your own stores might, might be changed by uh, what's happening this year? 
this crisis is just accelerating things that are happening anyway. And I don't think it will change the mix per se. At the end, the consumer defines the mix. And um, also here, I think we're in this together as a brand with our long-standing retail partners, and we need to answer um, to the demands of our um, consumers and um, find the best ways to them um, in a physical way, but also in a digital way. And uh, we allow our retail partners to sell our um, product in their own digital channels. So that's certainly helping. Yeah. And we see it also from the warranty activations that they still um, sell product online. Um, so I think it's offering the right mix of channels to consumers that make successful brands in the future. And whereas this crisis may accelerate some things, I don't think it will uh, change that fundamentally. Mm. Okay. I mean, it seems, seems to me that some of the businesses that have, uh, that have done best, I mean, they're all suffering, everyone, everyone's sales are down, but the, the major e-commerce platforms, you know, the Amazons that in, in, our, in our market, maybe the Chrono 24s or Ebays or whatever, you know, the, these are people whose you know, digital advantage coming, in, coming into this issue um, means that they're, they're picking up share, I guess, and, and it might, might become stronger as, uh, as channels for, for, for watch brands, not just, not just on the secondary market, but even perhaps as primary retailers. Well, I certainly think that this situation is accelerating everything digital right now, but at the end, um, it will be upon every um, player, every uh, stakeholder in the market uh, to make the most out of that um, himself, be the retailer, be it the brand, be it an online only platform. So, um, of course, everybody's focused on digital now, but this will um, pass to some extent at some point, and then people need to make good decisions to have the best offering for their consumers. Yeah, well, I, I for one, you know, I, I don't think you can pick up the beauty of that aqueous, um, aquamarine dial just from, a, just from a screen. So I would recommend that people get, get into their stores as quickly as they can after, once, we're, once we're released. Um, Absolutely, and that's also one of the reasons why you can't launch too many products, right? Because yeah. you don't have your key channel, which is um, brick and mortar retailers to showcase your product. Mm. It's um, up, on the, up to the consumer to make the decision to buy that watch online, but normally it's a mix of several steps that lead to the purchase. And um, uh, the physical interaction with a luxury product will remain very important in the future. That's no question to me. Mm. And fi finally, we'll try and try and look forward to the to the time when there's a certain amount of norm normality. I mean, I don't think anybody's deluding themselves that we're going to catch up on this second quarter's business this year. But hopefully, we can you know things will be moving better in the in the third and fourth quarter. I mean, how how do you think the the holiday season, the Christmas season, might look for you, or, or are you almost you know looking further ahead now into 2021 and and planning for that? Yes, well, as we discussed at the beginning, if I could predict that, that would be wonderful. Um, unfortunately, I can't. I hope that things will end up to um, the holiday season that's upon us. I hope that we will um, have a more or less um, regular holiday season with um, physical stores. We will still have some picking up to do in the first half of next year. Some product launches are postponed to next year. Some brands postponed all of their launches to next year. So uh, there will be sales missing for everybody. But uh, yeah, that's just what it is. And again, we are in this together and we have to find out of this together. And um, we, can't change, uh, we can't change the situation. So um, like everyone else, we are just trying to make the best out of it. And, just ourselves uh, to what it is and push hard now to make sure we stay in touch with consumers. We make a difference that they will remember when things um, get a bit more normal and to place ourselves well for that time. Right. Okay, Rolf. Well, well, I really appreciate your time. It's great, great to see you you're in good health and the whole Oris team and family are in, in good health. So uh, I wish you all the best until we, until we uh, can meet again. Yes, Rob. I hope so too. Thank you very much. All right. Thank Bye you. Bye-bye. Take care.
拜拜。